Okay, this is a video about loading um, programs into a Sinclair ZX Spectrum using an MP3 player. Um, now, you would think you all have to do is basically connect the, um, the headphone socket of the um, MP3 player straight into the earphone input of the um, of the Sinclair, but that doesn't work. And based on my observations, the reason for this is that. Um, all these MP3 players, or CD players rather, have dedicated um, headphone outputs which are designed for moving coil headphones, you know, delicate hi-fi jobs. Um, and when you try to fit them into the spectrum, you just don't get a high enough level. Right, now why is that? Well, well from what I can make out, these old cassette decks, um, when you plug um, an earphone into them, what you're actually doing is you're actually just dumping the um, the earphone socket straight across the speaker. So essentially, what you're getting out of here is a one one watt speaker output, um, as opposed to the um, the low power output of the um, MP3 players, CD players, or whatever uh, modern technology. Now, why did the why did they just dump it across one amp straight across there and how did they get away with it? Well they got away with it because they actually used a different type of headphone back then. They used a, a movement moving magnet headphone that were actually designed for the purpose. Now on the internet I've come across um, solutions for this and basically the one that was working for me was to use a um, um, one of these um, cassette adapters which allows you to plug your mp3 player through this and then basically you play um, the tape in the drive off the off the adapter and then you use the output and then you put the output into the spectrum and hey presto you can load your programs up that way um, but I thought there's got to be a, a, a more sensible easier solution than this but based on what I've seen on the internet so far um, I couldn't see a solution now this is the solution I've come up with. Now I don't know if I don't know if whether this is a good idea or not. It probably is going to need someone to um, do more investigation on this. But the solution I have used is to use one of these. Now this, hang on, will it focus in? There we go. These are available on the internet for a couple of quid. Um, can we focus in on the name of this thing? Let's have a look. Hang on for seconds. Anyway, there we are. Anyway, it's a little amplifier board, a tiny little amplifier board, and it seems to have everything that we need. Um, it's got an input of 9 volts, which is great because that's what the uh, Sinclair Spectrum uses. It's got the, um, the, um, the line in stroke headphone input. Um, Great, that's exactly what we want again. And it has an output of about one watt to drive the speaker. So this is essentially doing everything that this big box is um, attempting to do. Now, it has an additional advantage, and it's actually so small it will actually fit inside the case of the Spectrum. And that's what I've done with this one here. So, I've got this input here from the MP3 player into a board inside this machine. Um, the, um, the power, the 9 volt connections are soldered across the input power input, which is 9 volts. Uh, now the out output is speaker output and ground. I've already got a ground, so a single wire then goes from the output of the speaker output to the um, ear input pin on the, um, on the um, spectrum board. Um, and that's basically the only three connections that are into the spectrum um, and then the other two connectors which are the input are just connected straight to this cable which I have hung out the back of the machine. Now um, the reason I've gone down this route is because I didn't want to uh, damage the um, sorry I didn't want to convert the earphone input because I might still want to use that for loading off tapes and the whole thing is up and running as far as I you know and it seems to be working. Like I said I could have made a terrible mistake here. What might we doing here might be um might be um very um detrimental to the long longevity of the Sinclair but at the moment I can't see the error so this is what I'm doing. So if I plug this in now just to 
show you it working. Okay. Okay, the spectrum's fired up. So if I now do the old load, da, da, okay, and then press enter. Okay, so now it's waiting. Go into my MP3 player. One. Press play. And there we go. Absolutely rock solid. Loads the program straight away. That's the loader in. So now it's loading the um, the pipe stream. Now the um what's the lampifier board, where's the amplifier board? There we are. Um I found that um it's got a volume control it's got a volume control in here as well, which is quite useful. And I found that setting the volume at the halfway position um actually gives um the best input for the spectrum. I just want to prove, I just want to show you it working. And there she goes. Right, now, like I say, it fits inside, and you can see the board in there. I still need to, um, it's got a red LED on it, which is, um, well, you can see like low inside the side the spectrum. Um, as you can see, it fits in there quite nicely. I'm going to hot glue it in, but I haven't done yet. And I've just got the um, the input cable, the one going to the MP3 player, just hanging out the back at the moment. Um, what I might do is cut a little knock niche in the um, in the case so I can feed it out uh, and make a neater job of that as well. But uh, there you go. That is um, that is doing its thing. And it's still, still loading up. Um, loading off MP3 is um, advantageous as well because um, the spectrum I had was stored in the uh, attic for, well, best part of three decades, I suppose. And the tapes seem to have um, faded quite dramatically uh, to the point where they won't load anymore. So although I've got the tapes, they, they won't work. So what I've had to do is download um, a, a backup copy and um, that's what I'm using here now. Uh, you can tell that the um, the audio is amplified because you get a nice strong audio signal off the spectrum. Um, when you put um, just headphones off the, off the MP3 player into the ear input, you can you, you can hardly hear any signal at all. And there we go, it's loaded up. Right, I'll have to stop the MP3 player now, or I'll just continue on. There we go, and there we go. Um, working away. Right, um, just for general reference, um, other jobs I've had to do with this machine was um, change the membrane, because um, the membrane just, the plastic, must degrade an age over the years because it just cracks. And it, you do so much look at it and you get another crack in it, so I bought a new one of those. Uh, put new caps in it. I've done a composite video mod on it. Um, um, and I've had to tweak um, some of the pots in here as well because there's been an issue too. The um, the colour drifted a bit so it was only given a black and white image. Uh, oh, and I had to replace the um, power supply because the original transformer had burnt out. Um, but uh, there we go. But now I have um, what I think is quite a neat little spectrum solution. Um, like I say, if we, yep, that's all it takes to run it now. Little MP3 player, 
a spectrum box and I can no longer need to have this um, this big old cassette player cluttering up the desk. Okay, so it's just an idea. I'm not saying it's uh, um, not saying something you should do. You think about it, work through the pros and cons, and see if I've made some horrible mistake when I've um, been thinking this through. But otherwise, there you go, a solution.